Welcome Necro Posters and crew, I'm the Body Counter, and welcome to my first Dead Space video since the channel overhaul. Today I thought to grease up my cutter by doing a fun video sharing my love for the games and more specifically, details and facts you may not know within the games. The Dead Space community isn't as big as other games, but with the remake on the horizon, I thought to use this channel as a platform to grow the glorious community and share some convergence inducing Necro Posts along the way. If you haven't already and want to follow me for more Dead Space content, Please subscribe to support my work. Now with all that out of the way, let's dive into the corruption. Fact. I love. Most people know about the subtle chanting that can be heard if you get close enough to the red marker in the first dead space. But what most people might not know is what's being chanted. The mantra, God I hope I pronounce this right, Sumos hiri muerte, nostra sanctos deus. It's a mix of pseudo-Latin mixed with English and Spanish, which roughly translates to, we are here in death, our holy God. Several light sources in the two sequels can be damaged and destroyed with weapons. These don't enhance gameplay at all, but the detail is there and I love it. Plus it's fun to do when getting screenshots or videos. In Dead Space 2 and 3, there's hidden audio hints that activate if the player takes too long to complete their objective or travel in the wrong direction. Hey Ellie, their thrusters already in place on the underside of the elevator pod. How much force do they yield? Two should be enough to move back onto the mag rail. Shoot the red tips to ignite them. Red tips. Got it, thanks. Ellie, the door in here only opens for Howard Phillips, the station keeper, but he's dead. Can you open it? No, I don't have some magic panel that opens all the doors in the sprawl. Is his body around there somewhere? Maybe you can use it to fool the door. Use his body to fool the door. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a shot. Hey, Isaac. Am I gonna stand here all day? Hang on, I'll be there soon. Hey. If you're embarrassed to ask for directions, just follow your waypoint. <laughs> in Chapter 1 of Dead Space 2, after obtaining the Kinesis module, there's a small two-level shelving unit that can be destroyed for TK pikes. Not that it's useful since you would usually deal with <coughs> slashes before being able to do this, but it's still a cool detail regardless. In the second chapter of Dead Space 2, the stanchions inside the train, and I actually had to google that word, I had no idea they were called stanchions, can be smacked, providing free TK impalement weapons. Unlike the last fact, this one is actually beneficial and is a useful strategy to save ammo on harder difficulties. If you're like me and hate leapers with a burning passion, make use of this tip. Leapers die instantly in nominal gravity environments if you remove just one arm while they're clinging to a surface. In Chapter 5, before meeting Dana, you'll need to take an elevator. <laughs> to avoid this scare and some loss of health, simply shoot the vent before the slasher jumps out and you're spared the minor inconvenience. Now this one might be just my imagination, but I can hear a specific slasher voice line that sounds like they're screaming son of a bitch without the bitch. <laughs> I don't doubt the potential of some form of consciousness remaining in necromorphs, what with their reaction to being lit on fire by flailing their arms, or a leaper attempting to rush away from Isaac when he succeeds in his quick time event. Enhanced leapers on the hardest difficulty in the third game can sometimes survive having both their arms severed. They'll then resort to worming their way towards you, and it's a pretty good laugh. <laughs> severed leg models from the USM Valor Earth Defense Force Marines from the first game make an out-of-place return in Chapter 1 and 5 of Dead Space 2, with the same old textures, a very odd choice seeing as no EDF Marines make an appearance in the game. When switching to and from the Seeker Rifle, a spent shell casing will be ejected from the rifle, regardless on if the weapon is fully loaded or you've already fired a shot and ejected a shell. The USG Ishimura has a whole lab devoted to creating lifeless cloned babies in order to then amputate their cloned limbs as replacements for workers that may have sustained a severe injury. What's interesting to note is that the lab is actually organised and store each kind of limb and bone in separate containers. The flamethrower in Dead Space 1 cannot be fired in a vacuum, when in reality, hydrazine fuel, the same fuel used for the flamethrower and many rocket propulsion systems on Earth today, is quite capable of being ignited in a vacuum. This oversight was fixed in Dead Space 2, and in Dead Space 3, all flamethrower types work in space. If you think the detonator is too situational to use, try shooting the mines directly at a necromorph. You'll essentially turn the detonator into an impact grenade launcher and deal massive damage to necros. If you miss, you can always retrieve the mine using the old fire. The detonators in Dead Space 3 also have a larger capacity than any other survey charge weapon tip. Tower Volantis is covered in markers as we know, but something worth noting is the big fucking marker to the right of the bridge where you encounter the only spitters of the base game. 
Oh my god, oh my god, Squeaks, I missed you too, buddy! Yeah, th this pink mouse that makes noise when you interact with it. Bonus fact! Since I'm in the same spot, there's an invisible interactive door panel in this corner. Most people would be eager to stop an infector from making an enhanced slasher, but if you allow the infector to turn Mercer's corpse into a slasher in chapter 10 and kill it, you're rewarded with a short but awesome victory tone. So most people know if you take the first letter of every chapter in the first game, it spells out Nicole is dead. Yeah. But interesting enough, Dead Space 2 is the only game with named chapters that doesn't spell out a secret message. Dead Space Extraction spells out Warren Lies, referencing Warren Eckhart's deceitful nature and affiliation to the Church of Unitology. Dead Space Mobile's chapters spell out He Will Betray, a nod to Tyler Radikoff lying to the protagonist to allow the necromorph infestation to reach the rest of the sprawl. Dead Space 3's chapters spell out Brother Moons Are Awake, a foreshadowing of the Brethren Moons being the source of the Marcus Signal and the primary threat to humanity. And finally, Dead Space 3's DLC, Awakened, spelling out R.I.P., which I don't think needs an explanation. In the first zero-gravity environment of the first game, you can find the bodies of patients within their therapy bed pods. Infectors are one of the least humanoid looking of the necromorphs, and we're never explicitly shown the full transformation of a human into one. However, a portion of the transformation is shown in the Dead Space comic, when the corpse of James, the head of PSEC on Aegis 7, begins to contort and the ribcage bursts open. The other time is partially shown in Dead Space 1, where a man is seen coughing up a light yellow liquid before becoming motionless. There's a transcript of the transformation process if you complete Dead Space 1 and start a new game plus to gain access to backstory logs. The transcript notes, The chest splits along the center now as the flesh stretches and expands outwards. The organs, bone, and muscle bend inwards. And the body is convulsing. A yellowish briny liquid bursts from the mouth, accompanied by choking noises. And that's the end of today's facts and details in the Dead Space universe. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you did, feel free to drop a like below and leave a comment to show your support. Links are in the description for the Dead Space Necro posting Facebook group and Discord for your fill of Dead Space memes. Subscribe to join the Horde today, and as always, make us whole again. <laughs>